self-motivated. That's one of the, the dimensions they look for. If if someone can't work on their own, if they're, there's definitely people in the world that need a manager. And um, if you need a manager, you're just not going to fit in at Valve. Um, then there's also year-end bonus. I mean, they take this chunk of money and your peers, like, help divvy that up. Ah, okay. And so if you're some kind of asshat and you're like... <laughs> I don't want to work on anything this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so there is some motivation to get along and to, like, be productive. Um, okay. My resume will be in in the morning. <laughs> yeah, Hello Valve is always hiring. Um, it's... Um, yeah, I mean, we... Uh, this last year, so some backstory on how I got involved with Valve... I uh, um, do all these YouTube videos of various hobby projects, mm -hmm. and so Gabe had seen some of these videos, and they had been wanting to get into hardware for a long time, and they'd been interviewing quite a few folks that um, were very narrow. In the hardware space, you can get narrow really quick. Um, you know, you could be a chip designer, and that's all you do for 40 years, and that's easy to do. So they were having trouble finding someone that could do, like, product development from start to finish. And so Gabe saw my videos and he's like, well, I gotta, we gotta get her. So he asked some folks to come talk to me at Maker Fair, I think it was. And these Valve folks came up to me and they're like, hey, we're from Valve, we want you to come interview. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Everyone wants me to come interview. And uh, right. <laughs> I don't, I, I play games, but not really like modern games, so Valve meant nothing to me. And I guess they didn't approach me in the right way to say, well, have you heard of Portal, which I had. That would have turned my head a little bit more. So I kind of blew them off, um, maybe not in those exact words. Um, and then they came to a pinball show that I went to. Oh, yeah, I'm also a pinball collector. I have a bunch of pinball machines. They came to a pinball show, and I'm like thinking to myself, what the hell is up with these Valve people? Why They're stalking are they... you. Yeah, <laughs> sending me emails and showing up to events. And um, I turned to one of my buddies that was there that's in the video game industry. And I'm like, do you know this company called Valve? Uh, he's like, yeah. He's like, they keep asking me to come in for an interview. And he like, he's, his jaw dropped. He's like, what? <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you're like not going and doing this interview? This is like Mecca for... Um, <laughs> A video game designer. I'm like, oh, okay. So then, like a week or so later, they contact me. Like, well, Gabe wants to fly down to Portland to visit you. See, like, they're okay. probably pursuing you because they've never had someone reject them before. <laughs> I, I guess maybe, <laughs> maybe that's it. Um, it's Ooh, pretty shiny. flattering now. Yeah, it's flattering thinking back that I was just blowing them off and that like, <laughs> I'm far too cool. Such an you, amazing Val. company. Um. So Gabe came down and he kind of put things in perspective. I'm like, well, maybe this Valve company is going to stick with hardware, and it, you know they're pretty serious and they actually have some money, so um, maybe they could do it. So I, I flew up a week or two later, and it was kind of funny. I was, they wanted me to interview for a full time position, and I've always done contract work. I'm like, I don't want to work for anyone. And they're like, well, we'll just come meet with us. So I show up and I. I'm in this room, and there's probably 10 people in there around the table, and it was like this rapid fire. People were like, all right, you're going to make a game controller. How are you going to do it? Go. <laughs> and so I'm like, uh, 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 I'll do it like this and that, and you know, use my toy contacts, and da-da-da, and then someone would quickly like whip out some other thing. What I'm finding, what I found out, or now that I've interviewed a lot of people and understand the Valve culture, they were looking for things like product focus so that I could think about the customer and that I knew the entire process from concept all the way through production, um, which is one of their dimensions that they look for. And I don't know, maybe an hour or two into this like intensive interview-ish thing that wasn't supposed to be an interview, <laughs> a couple of them got up, Gabe got up, left, and um, then one of the guys came back in, and he's like, hey, Jerry, come with me. So they took me down to the fourth floor, and they started like showing me the the building. They're like, "We just moved a cabal a group out of the space. You could have this entire half the building if you want. Do you think that's enough space? You know, if we knock down walls, um, what, would that help? Um, what kind of tools? How much money would it take to get a hardware lab going? And um, <laughs> you know, and they just started treating me like I was working there. 
And you're like, uh, I don't know. I, I told Gabe at one point, I said, you know, a hardware lab could be very, very expensive. Hardware development may be just beyond what you guys want to do. It's like, it might be like a million dollars just for tools. And he, he laughed and he's like, is that it? <laughs> like, whoa. So I was supposed to fly back that evening and they, they asked me, well, we have a hardware company coming through that wants to pitch us an idea. Can you just, we'll pay you your contract rate if you just hang around for three days. And you just come in, work with us a bit. And like, okay, I have nothing better to do this week. And they just kept treating me like I was working here. And by the end of the third day, I like met with their hardware vendor that was coming through. And it's like, hey, this place is pretty sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll work here. <laughs> so that's kind of the story. Long-winded, but no, nice, <laughs> nice. Hey, Jerry, uh, you, you touched on you touched on something uh, back there. You and I share a enjoyment of the whole process from start to finish instead of just being pigeonholed into one little portion of the project. Do you feel that keeping that wide breadth of exposure um, for the whole process lets you see things more clearly? Because sometimes I try and explain to people, you know, instead of just looking at one thing and being really good at that, it's trying to expand, look at the whole process. Exactly. Is good in as many parts of that, which makes your job more fun, I guess, instead of just being the person screwing in the <laughs> bit on a yeah, tiny line. Yeah, so it's it's a couple dimensions. I Fun is definitely part of it, keeping things a nice variety. I would be so bored if I had to do the same thing every day. And I've been in situations like, you know, I thought chip design was going to be my, my life. That was life dream. And after a while, it got kind of boring doing that day in and day out. Um, um, but the second part of it is, I think the people that make the best products actually are involved all the way from start to finish, like Dave Hampton and the Furby. Like if he didn't actively go out and do all this research in psychology and research in like finding the cheapest microcontroller, I mean, it's all these stories he was he was telling. He was a great mentor for like my toy design. It's like, yeah, that's the way you do it. You have to think from the customer all the way to how can I make this thing manufacturable with high yields and so it won't break or, you know, doesn't take extra screws when they're putting it together. I think you would be more passionate about it if you didn't have to just hand off your section and if you could see the finished product that you're working for and it and didn't feel like just part of, of that. Um, I think you would that be works. very attached. <laughs> that works very well at Valve. Um, that's where Valve really shines is that everyone has input into the projects. Um, I've certainly seen in other companies where they just want you to do your bit and just don't meddle in the big picture because you know they've got managers that are um, so much smarter than you lowly engineers, <laughs> right? Right. Um, and, and you get pretty crappy products out of that. You get, well, it's a shame when somebody asks. right down the hall knows the answer to your problem but you can't ask. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, the, the company I worked for just prior to Valve was exactly like that. It was a chip company and they were very compartmentalized. And um, I had to try to work with parts from all these different groups. And I would walk into these groups and it was just like, they're pissed off that I was there. Like, who's this person intruding from another group? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so be some downsides to that. I think of Valve uh, mostly for Steam and software. Uh, how does the hardware fit in with Valve as far as your typical day? I still want to know, the 11 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, so 11 o'clock. Um, so 11 o'clock, I'll go over what my day is like and then I'll, I'll cover what it, what it means to Valve. So I, I wander in at 11 o'clock unless there's something pressing to get me in earlier. Um, and I'll stay until I'm finished. Um, I'm a nerd, which I really enjoy what I'm doing. So, I mean, just last week I was in until four in the morning. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm trying to prove a concept and I want, you know, I'm trying to sell it to the rest of the company. So I'm like really driving to get this thing done before this other event happens. So I did that last night. Yeah, you did. 
<laughs> um, and I wouldn't do that unless I felt that it was the best thing and that I actually had a voice around here. If it was just a nine to five, I'd be gone. I'd be in nine and out at five. So, um, so usually my day consists, I wander in, grab some coffee, and then I um, just kind of wander into the hardware lab and everyone's kind of wandering in around that time. We have some folks that come in earlier and some that, that stay later. It just depends on their, their life situation. And then uh, the communication starts. I just like start chatting with people. So my colleagues um, that are working on similar projects, so ask them how it's going and try to get a, a status update just kind of on the spot. And then I explain where I'm at in probably the first... 30, 40 minutes is just the exchange of information of like where we're at. And, you know, the interesting things come out of that. So, you know, you know exactly what everyone's working on every single day. And then if they run into a roadblock or they get something done quicker, you kind of know their availability or where they're having problems. So people are constantly shifting their priorities and kind of horse trading their time. So, you know, if someone's having trouble with something and be like, well, you know, <laughs> um, if you work on this bit of software for me a little down the road, I'll try to jumpstart this thing. You know, it kind of works <laughs> like that. It works trading, really well. Right? Yeah, it's kind of like horse trading in a way. Um, and that's how it goes. And then um, we're working on new concepts, and then we have the ideas of where we want to go. Uh, Valve Hardware wants to be – they want Valve Hardware, the company wants Valve Hardware to be like they do software. Um, Hardware's typically been like there's a decision made early in the design process, and that's what gets made a year later. They want to do it more iterative, where we're probably going to screw it up a, a quite a few times. So we might make something, and we're going to give it internally to folks to try. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get early feedback on that. And it's going to be expensive. Like each one of these things might be 10 times their normal cost, because we're only going to make a couple hundred. And then after that, we're going to make some tweaks to it. And when we feel confident, we're going to go and make a thousand and then maybe give those out to folks on Steam and like get feedback on that and do that iteration process until we're confident that we have the best product. Are these so are all game relating hardware. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's heavily focused on games, although Steam is not necessarily entirely focused on Steam on uh, games. So our our direction isn't necessarily to only come up with game things. And so we have initiatives going on that are yeah. non-game related. I just saw that about uh, accepting right now people's software for other things, uh, different s subjects on Steam that were going to be hosted rather than just on gaming, which is interesting, green light and some of the other things like that. Yeah, Valve is very much, um, uh, Gabe, Gabe, Steam was his baby. He really wanted that to happen. He believed in it way before digital distribution was even, you know, eclipsed Apple and all these companies and did it way early. And um, he drove that project and now it's hugely successful. And folks around here think of um, as Valve is more of an entertainment company. It might be multimedia, it might be games. Um, applications and you're starting to see more of that um, in in Steam. Steam Workshop, you know, users are generating their own content. Mm -hmm. um, which is so cool. I mean it's it's I just love that aspect. It's like because the users are far smarter than we are. And they have more they can hyper focus on things and just make it so much better. And that's what we hope we can do with the, the hardware too. It's like get stuff in their hands early. You know, and make sure that they have the best experience. So we have been public about some of the stuff we're doing, and I can. Um, we did talk about wearable computers, which is somewhere like maybe like four or five years down the road. It's like nothing near term. Um, so we we decided strategically to talk about that effort in in hopes of recruiting people mm. into our hardware department. It was very difficult. Like the same thing. I had um, no one knows Valve if they're a hardware person unless they're a gamer, and we were having a, a difficult time recruiting. I mean, the group has grown a whole lot. It started with me, and now we're, you know, the entire side of the fourth floor is like our entire group. But it was so brutal trying to find uh, engineers that were T-shaped and, you know, 
<laughs> outgoing and social and self-motivated. Yes. So, but the wearable computer stuff is very cool. It's. Uh, um, I've seen the Nintendo purse. What is what is the 